I was a kid who loved to play sports. Now, for the most part, we learned and played sports on our own with our friends in our neighborhood. No coaches, no uniforms, no umpires or referees, and no parents. We went outside, picked some teams, and figured it out for ourselves. And when we did play organized sports at the local park district or Little League, there were no travel teams. There were no off-season training camps. There was no year-round focus on one sport. We did it for fun in our neighborhood, in our community, and when the seasons changed, we moved on to the next sport. Now, I love sports so much as a kid that I didn't want to let it go as I got older, so I found ways to stay involved. And what ended up happening for me is I was forced to look at sports from many different perspectives as my involvement in sports changed over the years. So of course, like all of you, I saw sports from a fan's perspective. Now I challenge you to find a bigger Cubs fan between the years 1977 and 2004 because I was completely obsessed. I saw things from a coach's perspective. I coached a high school soccer team in 2000, and I coached a variety of youth sports both before I had my son as well as some of his park district teams when he was younger. I saw things from the perspective of working in professional sports. I was the public address announcer for the Chicago Wolves hockey team for 14 seasons, where I got three championship rings. Not bad for a kid who couldn't even ice skate. And I was the public address announcer for the Chicago Cubs for four seasons between 2005 and 2008. And in, in addition to all of those unique perspectives on sports, I've been the public relations and marketing manager at the Buffalo Grove Park District here in Illinois for the past 13 years. And what that has done is it's not only caused me to see youth sports through a different lens, but in my case, it's kind of made me take all of these other unique experiences in sports and connect the dots, making me realize exactly what we're doing and why we are doing it. What we're going to talk about today could very well challenge the way you think and might cause you to question some of your own behavior. This is in no way meant to be judgmental. I'm guilty of some of these very things that we're going to talk about. It took me many years and this combination of many different experiences to come to the conclusions that I have. What I want you to do is to think critically and allow yourself to look at things from a completely different angle than what you're used to. It's okay to be critical of yourself. If you're never critical of yourself, you're never going to become better at whomever it is you are. Now what I'm going to talk about today involves changing the culture, and that's not easy to do. But it can be done, and we can do it together. Remember, not that long ago, people smoked cigarettes indoors in public places. But the culture changed, and what was once socially acceptable is now not. Okay, let's talk a little bit about youth sports. We've all seen it. Parents yelling at kids, coaches yelling at kids, parents yelling at coaches, parents and coaches yelling at officials. It's common. We aren't shocked by it when we see it. In fact, I'd argue we almost expect it to happen. So why do we as adults get so wrapped up in the outcome of a youth sporting event? Hmm? Now before we can answer that, I think we have to ask ourselves, why do we as adults get so wrapped up in the outcome of any sporting event? Take professional sports. Do we know the players? Personally? Do we get money back if they win? If they win and we rooted for that team, does that make us a winner in life? Now, as you can imagine, in the almost 20 years that I worked in professional sports, I saw some pretty unbelievable inappropriate fan behavior. Now, you might say, but Mike, that's professional sports. What does that have to do with youth sports? And those players make millions of dollars. I've heard people say, we pay their salaries. We've paid for the right for them to hear what we have to say. Really? Many of us patronize local businesses where the owner, whom we might know, might make millions of dollars. Do we have that same right to be disrespectful? I would argue that we typically show those people who are successful in everyday life more respect. So why are we so openly disrespectful to these athletes, coaches, and officials who are arguably some of the most talented and successful people in the world, yet we show basic human respect to everyone else in every other area of our lives. Not many of us know very many professional athletes. The chances of becoming a professional athlete are really slim. How slim? I'm glad you asked. 
Before I started looking up statistics, I made a phone call to the guy in my town who's the president of the local Little League Association. He told me that the Little League Association has been in existence since 1959. Now, we couldn't come up with a statistically credible estimation of the number of children who had played in the league over all of those years. So for the sake of argument, let's just say it was a lot. And he told me that in their almost 60 years of existence, the number of children that had gone through their program that he knew of that ended up playing Major League Baseball was two. Then I started looking at data. The NCAA did a study in 2012, and here's some of their findings. They said that the percentage of high school baseball players, not little leaguers, the really good little leaguers that make their high school team, the percentage of high school baseball players that end up getting drafted by a major league baseball team is 0.6%. Now that's just drafted. The percentage of those drafted players that actually end up playing major league baseball, 17.2% only. And baseball's the sport where you have the best odds. The percentage of high school football players that end up playing professionally, 0.08%. Now, I was under the impression that we all knew that the chances of becoming a professional athlete were really difficult. But according to a poll taken in 2015 by NPR, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, and the Harvard T.H. Chan School of Public Health, the percentage of parents of high school athletes in the U.S. that hope their child will become a professional athlete, 26%. That's a lot of false hope, which got me thinking. If 26% of high school parents have that false hope, what percentage of parents of younger kids have that same false hope? It would have to be higher. That could definitely be part of our problem. So we have these elite athletes who are the best of the best in the world at what they do, and we pay money to be entertained by watching them play their sport. Then why is it that when we spend our entertainment dollars to watch other people who are the best of the best in the world at what they do, we behave appropriately. But as soon as that entertainment is sports, we abandon all social rules of acceptable behavior. We don't heckle ballet dancers or Broadway performers. Some of them make millions of dollars. I've never heard of anyone shouting at the stage, hey, Baryshnikov, you're really phoning it in tonight. My kid can dance better than that. I've been to a lot of concerts. I've never heard anyone tell the Foo Fighters, Duran Duran, or Yo-Yo Ma that they suck. Yet this behavior is common in sports. Now, I can remember going to Cubs games when I was a kid and hearing these things. I can remember going to Cubs games in my early 20s as a young adult and behaving this way. So some things haven't changed that much over time. But the big difference, I think, in what is perpetuating this inappropriate behavior is now it's not limited to the guy in the stands. It's all over the internet. And even the loudest, most obnoxious fan in the stands is only audible within a couple of sections. You can't hear him across the stadium. But online, oftentimes thousands of people or more can hear him loud and clear. Now, I got my first taste of this, my first day on the job with the Chicago Cubs. Now, as you can imagine, growing up a Cubs fan, announcing my first game ever at Wrigley Field, I was a little bit nervous. But the game went well, Cubs won. And uh, I felt good about it, no mistakes. I got home that night, and someone sent me a message saying, hey, Mike, you need to check out this fan website. They're talking about you on this online. So I went on the website, and this guy writes a blog after every game. And in his blog that day, he talks about the game, and he mentions the new PA announcer, and how terrible he thinks he is, and how he has a terrible voice that's high-pitched, and he should go back to hockey. Now, as if that wasn't enough to totally make my day, at the end of his blog were all these anonymous comments from people just piling on. And I wasn't even a player. I was just the public address announcer. But it's sports, so it's okay. Everybody's fair game. So why does it matter? It matters because we're teaching our kids by example that this is an appropriate way to behave. And we're not leaving our inappropriate behavior at the professional sporting event. We're bringing it into our youth sports. And because we're becoming more and more numb to it, it's permeating our youth sports culture more and more. 
And because it's permeating our youth sports culture more and more, this is how we are training our children to behave when they become the next generation of coaches and parents. Now, I remember the day that I realized I had to do something about this. My son, Jack, was in second grade. And he was playing house league soccer at our local park district where I work. Now, his coach, to this day, I think was one of the best youth sports coaches I've ever seen. He actually really didn't know much about soccer, but he made it fun and he had a great attitude. His assistant coach was his wife. She was a bit of a loose cannon. So one day they're playing a game early in the season and every time the other team stole the ball, she would start screaming at the referee to call a foul. Now I assure you there were no fouls being committed. But this behavior kept going on and it kept getting worse and worse. And this referee was only like 16 years old. Finally, I couldn't take it anymore. I got out of my chair, I walked up to her, and I said very calmly, you need to stop behaving like this. You're being completely inappropriate. Now, I'm here as a parent, but I work for this park district, and I can't allow you to keep abusing this referee. I'm gonna have to report this. Now, what ended up happening was not only did she stop behaving that way that day, she didn't do it the rest of the season. And what I realized was that we have a disconnect between what is and what should be. Now let me ask you a question. Why do kids play sports? If you had to come up with one reason and one reason only, what would it be? Would it be to have a career as an athlete? Would it be, would it be to get a college scholarship? Would it be to feel like a winner? To have fun, right? Playing games are fun. So at the end of the day, What's the difference between playing a game of soccer, basketball, or baseball, or chess, Monopoly, or even Go Fish? Is anyone trying any less hard to win? No. But do we go to our kid's friend's house and hover on the sidelines of the kitchen table while they're playing Monopoly, yelling, roll a seven! Oh my God, Timmy, Marvin Gardens, buy Marvin Gardens! No. Then why do we do it when they're playing sports? Why do we yell, encouragement. Why do we scream at the top of our lungs to run faster, get the ball, take the shot? It's like we're playing a video game and our voice is the joystick trying to control the players. Now, I don't know about you, some adults do play sports. How would you feel if you were playing volleyball or softball or golf and someone was shouting direction to you of what you should or shouldn't be doing while you are trying to do it? Now for most of us, like 99.999% of us, our kids have about as good a chance of becoming a professional Monopoly player as they do of becoming a professional athlete. And yes, winning is fun, but is winning more fun than playing the game? If you said to a kid, hey, I checked my crystal ball today, and guess what? That soccer game you guys have, you're gonna lose. You're gonna lose big. Do you think most kids would say, well, let's skip the game then? Or would they want to play the game? Because playing the game is fun. Playing with other kids is fun. Let's take sports out of the equation for a second because not all kids play sports, right? Some kids play chess, some kids dance, some kids sing in the choir or play in the band. Kids gravitate towards a multitude of different activities. Why? Because they find participating in them to be enjoyable. So what we should have is a bunch of kids playing sports because it's fun, but what we have is this culture in which we have a few things working against us. So problem number one, winning is everything. How many of you have heard someone somewhere say that sports teaches you how to be a winner, that life is a competition, you need to get ahead of the other guy? Well, that's the biggest lie ever told. I don't know about you, but I don't wanna work for an organization that has a culture of a bunch of people knocking each other down so that they can get ahead. Some of the best organizations I've ever been a part of are the ones that look to achieve things for the betterment of the group or other people. Which leads me to problem number two. Because winning is everything, the success of our youth sports coaches is determined by wins and losses. So rather than focusing on teaching skills or creating an environment in which kids are having fun, we are incentivizing our coaches to behave inappropriately because if they win, they're successful. If they lose, they are not, plain and simple. 
When it comes to determining the success of our youth sports co coaches, we have completely eliminated everything else that goes along with developing young people. Now, when I started to really think about this topic, I wanted to do something. So I came up with this sign. And I went to my boss at the park district, and I convinced him to put these signs up at all of our fields where we have youth sporting events. My goal was to have an impact on my community, but what ended up happening was it became a news story. First locally here in the Chicago area, but very quickly it got picked up by the Associated Press and Yahoo Sports, and it became a national story. And I thought if I took a humorous approach rather than an authoritative one, it might resonate with people and have a bigger impact. So here's the sign. Things for coaches, parents, and spectators to keep in mind while children are playing sports on our field. This is a game being played by children. If they win or lose every game of the season, it will not impact what college they attend or their future income potential. <laughs> of the hundreds of thousands of children who have ever played youth sports in Buffalo Grove, very few have gone on to play professionally. It is highly unlikely that any college recruiters or professional scouts are watching these games, so let's keep it all about having fun and being pressure free. Imagine how you'd feel if you saw a parent or coach from the opposing team cheering for your child when they made a great play. Then envision what kind of person you would think they are for doing that. You can be that person. <laughs> Referees, umpires, and officials are human and make mistakes just like players, coaches, and you. No one shouts at you in front of other people when you make a mistake, so please don't yell at them. We do not have video replay, so we will go with their calls. And the only reason children want to play sports is because it is fun. Please don't let the behavior of the adults ruin their fun. So today is the first day of the rest of your lives. My hope is that from now on, you will think differently about youth sports. What will have the greatest impact is who you choose to be from this point forward and how you react when you see other adults behaving badly at youth sporting events. Remember, we can change the culture. We can do it together. We just have to choose to do it. Thank you.